This program is funded in part by um the um hmm. uh, uh no one, okay? So so stop making fun of our sex. Yeah, you, you people know, think this is easy. Food. You know, I mean it's not it's not easy being us. Previously on Dirty Laundry. I suppose you're the ghost of Christmas past, and you don't know, tell me how wonderful my life has been. Now, I'm Calvin Haynes. I'm here to find somebody to tell me about what happened to my brother Mel. Well, Hinch, you're going to hire a new butler. I mean, this person's going to have to see a home, aren't they? <laughs> Only after the successful candidate has completed my three week orientation course. Have we heard the news? Taking the stab at politics. Tim here, the doll, is going to be the next mayor of Cedar Falls. You don't have Malcolm somehow involved in your bid for the mayor's seat, do you? Involved? <laughs> that means my campaign manager, Larry. Anyone buried that deep underneath the foundation of corporate greed cannot be trusted. I don't expect they have the most ideal bathing facilities. Wait a cotton peck a minute. That gives me an idea. Oh, that'll be my next project. Oh. You're going to wash the homeless instead of their clothes? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no way, Larry. I'm going to build myself a community wash house. No, no. Better yet, I'm gonna build myself a bathhouse like those ancient Greeks and Romans used to have. Yeah. You know, I can see it now with the columns and the statues and the scantily clad men. Oh, maybe I'll finally find myself a suitable butler candidate. None of the others worked out, eh? Oh, Larry, it is just so impossible to get good help these days. You just make the eensy weensy teensiest little demands and they scoff at you like your money wasn't the reason for their pathetic little existence. Oh, this new project of mine is going to get my mind off of that terrible situation. <laughs> good luck trying to get that through the bureaucracy of this town hall. As a matter of fact, it's town hall where I'm headed right now. Tim is debating Mayor Newell today. I can't say I feel good about Malcolm being involved, but Tim's a good and honest man. <laughs> He's got my vote. Well, I'll be a, a little Timmy. Our little Timmy's running for the next mayor. Blanche, where have you been for the past three months? Picking up the shattered fragments of my relic of a life. Guile so recklessly threw her golden boulder and shattered my glass palace of peace and prosperity. Don't you think you're laying on the melodrama a bit thick? This coming from a man who sings protest songs in a laundromat all day? All right, truce, truce. 
Now, come here, come here, sit down, have a seat. I'll tell you all about Tim's bid for the mayorship. Now, where to begin, where to begin? Well, I guess it started the night Mel was shot. Oh, God, just to think of that just makes me want to shudder. Well. Honey, what's an eight letter word meaning to strike? Here he goes again. It must be 6.30, the goddamn crossword puzzle. It's not enough that after the same dinner, in the same room, on the same night of every same February, that he needs to see me. Now I have to provide the twit with the answers to a puzzle he has no prayer of finishing. You know, none of it would actually matter. The trite conversation, the blind sex, his wife. If it wasn't for his infuriating sense of self-importance, that the meatloaf is exquisite pretentiousness. College professor, my ass. The man had trouble teaching himself his new zip code. Ever since he moved back to Santa Monica, he's been draining me. It was 15 years ago, for Christ's sake. Why can't he just let me go? He certainly had no trouble doing it then. An astronomy major? I mean, the woman did her thesis on the effects of the solar system on the shedding cycle of her cat. She couldn't pick out the North Star if you gave her a ride in a friggin' compass. But still, she had that inquisitive nature he had been searching for. My inquisition is, if she was so infatuating, then why is he still paying me a visit every Valentine's Day? Dearest, would you like some more vino? No. I'm done. What's a four-letter word for not driving home? <laughs> I don't know why I put up with this. He hints at staying the night, then slips out for a year at about 4.30. It's getting to be too predictable. I could have married Keith. I could have had children by now. But instead, here I sit, drowning in my own insecurity. If I could only find the strength to get my intentions across when I feel like I'm being put down. I know I can be more than this, more than what I've become, more than just the lady who stops in the 7-Eleven at 3 a.m. to pick up bread, Gatorade, and People magazine. I was an artist once, a veritable queen of the brush and canvas. We try not to feature landscapes, that desperate art gallery socialist. He didn't understand my laborious art. He could never know the agony of the white picket fence, the solitude, the shame. And still, here I sit, alongside his contemporary. Their kind will never know art. A three-letter word meaning skill. He just doesn't possess the capability. He sickens me. The wrinkled clothing, the counterfeit smile, the bane of my very creative existence. Out, damn spot, out! He is the anchor that weighs my soul. More cheese for the crackers, Sam? With vigor, my dove. Oh, and a bit thinner this time. This poor excuse for cheddar seems rather gamey when sliced so thick. Only a word from you, my pet. It's Munster, you simpleton. I've nearly got it. I only need an eight-letter word for, of all things, untimely death. Well, I'll be Dolly Parton's wig maker! Isn't that heroic? Oh, to think, man, you will almost let poor Tina fry like a pig on the 4th of July. Do you really think our little Timmy has a chance of winning this election? Well, it does seem he has a pretty strong platform, even with Abacus as his campaign manager. Oh, and Tina would make such a glorious first lady for Cedar Falls. What time is the showdown? <laughs> well, I'm about to close up shop right now and go check it out. I think they're going to start any minute. Let's go. Uh, here, Larry, darling, be a dear and bring my car, my baby blue round front. It's been all repaired. It is a little chill out. <laughs> so, buddy, all prepped up for the little debate tonight? I have every reporter in the county showing up for this thing. I, I'm, I'm just trying to remain calm. I mean, I mean, I, what, what if I say the wrong thing? I mean, I, 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 could, I could stutter all over the place and just... Uh, don't worry about it. Just follow the outline I gave you earlier. 
I did a, took a little stroll around town and did a little research. I know exactly what they're going to ask you. Mm, he's right, honey. You're natural. You could fool just about anybody with that hometown hokey boy charm of yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so lucky I have you by my side, sweetie. I mean, I just can't believe I almost lost you. Yeah, but what an ace in the hole. Your story of criminal injustice could be the key to us winning this election. You just stay in the background, look supportive and victimized, we'll have this thing in the bag. Now I have to go do some mingling, you guys get ready. All right, yeah, thanks buddy. You ready to pull this off, Pumpkin? Well, I mean, it shouldn't be any difficult than that sting in Colorado. Mm -hmm. I just like to let Malcolm think he's in control, you know what I mean? Well, you play your game well. You could almost have me fooled, almost. <laughs> well, I'm so lucky to have you by my side, sweetie. Mm-hmm. You have me, all right. Now, I can't wait to see how this turns out. We're both finally going to get what we deserve. Uh, 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 honey, you're, you're tying the knot too tight, honey. Oh. Honey, I'm sorry. It's just that all this has is, is got me so upset. You know, being put in prison for a crime you didn't commit could do that right. to a girl. But let's put all that negativity behind us and there's nothing but blue skies ahead. There's the next couple of Cedar Falls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Steve? This is where the circuits relocated. Glad you can make it, Chief. It's gonna be some event. Apparently so. Every news station is packed outside. I know. I sure can't pack them in. Drunks on New Year's Eve. Now, why did you ask me to come here? I have no interest in politics. Well, well it's not right now. That's true, buddy. But you do have the deep pockets that every politician lusts after. I mean, your contribution to the Tipson campaign could be the first significant move you make with the newfound wealth. Well, you could have just came by and asked for a check. Why did I have to come here? Publicity, buddy. Tim Timpson's the new hope here for our town of Cedar Falls. With him in office, we'll get rid of the bureaucracy, cut out the red tape, and most importantly, get rid of the old money rich folk like Blanche Rhinestone. Mr. Rhinestone did support Mayor Newell very staunchly during his re-elections. Listen, this could be a very final, not to mention very public breakup with the former employer. Denouncing the Rhinestone name in a public forum like this could cut the final ties between the two of you. Listen, man, it's obvious to everybody you want to have your own identity. My appearance on television would make her insane with fury. And your contributing to the Timpson campaign would indicate to the citizens of Cedar Falls that you are forced to be reckoned with in the social and political circles of this town. That's true. You know, people still view me as a rich woman's manservant. I could use an alternate means of exposure. Seems whenever I'm at a social situation, people still expect me to take their coat. It's as if my money means nothing without purpose. Hey, don't worry. This is going to work out great for everybody. Give and take, buddy. That's what it's all about. Even your old buddy Alkali couldn't argue with you on that. Come on, let's get inside. Yeah, and to help him out, I lent Tim my complete copy of the Lincoln-Douglas debates. <laughs> I think Tim's our own little giant. <laughs> Oh, hi. hi. How are you doing? Are you here for the debates? Debate? Darling, but debate. The last debate I attended, I was in session with Elvis and Orson Welles. They were fighting over the last donut. Oh, my God. What a pair of crybabies. <laughs> okay, then. Well, <laughs> I hope you're feeling a little better. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Uh, actually, I could use a little help. I'm looking for the parking clerk's office. It seems someone thought it would be an amusing joke to put a ticket on my cart I use for the, my psychic artifacts. I must go and contest. <laughs> well, I don't own a car. I believe in relying on my own foot power. Mm. It's better for me. And great for the environment. Blanche, perhaps you know where the mm. parking office is. Uh, hello? Blanche? <laughs> hi, hi. Uh, the, the parking office? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You must excuse me, really. Uh, it seems that my mind has just temporarily wandered. Uh, wandered. Uh, uh, the, the parking office, you say? <laughs> well, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I had occasion to be up there just recently with that whole terrible situation with Giles murdering my poor baby blue. Oh, nasty little man, that parking clerk. Uh, this Giles man killed your baby and you complained at the parking office? My baby? <laughs> no, no. Giles destroyed my powder blue cat Mac. 
it took weeks to repair. Um, does this train of thought lead it all to me finding the parking office? Have you no human compassion? Larry, you may tell this uh, woman that the parking office is on the third floor, room 318, and let's go. <laughs> um, excuse me. Tim Timpson is going to be debating Mayor Newell in there. You know, his wife is Tina Timpson, the woman you saved from the murder charge. Mm. They're really, really nice people, and they would love to see you again. Why don't you stop by and say hi? Uh, I have to check my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it was nice meeting you again. If I could have everyone's attention, please. Attention, please. Thank you. I'd like to thank you all for coming down this afternoon. This debate is based on the issues raised by Mr. Tim Timpson in his bid for the mayor's seat in the upcoming election. As you may well know, Mr. Timpson has voiced his outrage at city officials, especially in the handling of the murder case of Mel Haynes, which ended in the wrongful conviction of his wife, Tina. Fortunately, Mrs. Timpson's name was cleared and she has since been exonerated. But this young couple is now turning their close brush with tragedy into a beacon of what they call a new hope for the citizens of Cedar Falls. Mayor Newell has graciously agreed to participate in this proceeding this afternoon, feeling fully confident that the police and city officials did all they could to ensure the rights of Mrs. Timpson and continue to do so to this day. My name is Charles Levine. I will be your moderator this afternoon. Therefore, gentlemen, your debate is structured as such. Each one of you will have the opportunity to present an opening statement, and then the members of the press and the community will fill you in with a few questions after that. Mayor Newell, you may begin. Thank you, Chuck. My fellow citizens, respected members of the press, Mr. Timpson has made some volatile allegations regarding the political structure within Cedar Falls and has questioned its ethical practices. I have agreed to come here today to assure all of my constituents that our city has never seen brighter days and that a new hope is on the horizon. And that is a hope of comfort, safety, and familiarity in knowing your neighbors in knowing that your elected officials are truly working for the welfare and well-being of this fair city. Thusly, I challenge Mr. Timpson to prove that he is a man who is concerned with the well-being and welfare of this city and not some personal agenda. Oh, he is such a darling man. Oh, it's truly great. We have tea every Tuesday evening after a rip-roaring game of Yahtzee! <laughs> Shh! It's Tim's turn to speak. I'd like to congratulate Mayor Newell on the so meticulously scripted speech. It was well rehearsed and very well done. Friends, neighbors, colleagues, for those of you who are unfamiliar with myself and my wife, let me take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Tim Timpson, and me and my lovely wife, Tina, have lived among you in this fair town for the past year. Up until now, we've led a relatively quiet life. Tina would tend to her garden, and she and I would mingle with the local townsfolk, many of whom quickly became our friends. And then came the murder, a murder of one of those dear local citizens we had come to call friend. When my Tina was tried and convicted of the murder of Mel Haynes, I was distraught and devastated. I could not even bring myself to attend her scheduled execution. How could a town turn so quickly 
on one who has at first been so graciously welcomed into its bosom? No one knows that answer, except those who are in charge of the charade of an investigation. I have come to fully blame not those who receive the orders, but those who give them. If those fine public officials in charge of this investigation weren't so quickly pressed to find the murderer, my beloved Cupcake would never have known the feel of prison blues. She would never have had to share a cell with someone named Big Bertha. And she would never have had to have a last meal of cold turkey and lumpy gravy. My bid for the mayoral seat is a bid for the common man. Someone who wants what every small town average Joe wants. Equality for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to represent a Cedar Falls that does not rely on familiar formulas, but instead I see a Cedar Falls that is ready to shake off the dusts of a relic of an incumbent with outdated philosophies and misplaced power. Let's place the power back into the hands of the people, where it belongs. Back into the hands of a man who goes home to a hot meal and a loving family. That man is me, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Timson. Wow! Wow! Do you think Tim will give me the rights to his speech? This would make a great song. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Do be a dear and shut up and pay attention. We'll now open up the floor for questioning. Yes, Mr. Timpson, what exactly would be your strategy to lead Cedar Falls into the new regime? Well, that's, that's a very good question, and just give me a moment so I can come up with an appropriate answer. Cedar Falls needs assurance. As such, we must not forget the local Joe. I propose to have town meetings every month where residents can meet and discuss local concerns. I, as mayor, as well as the other local townsfolk, will be on hand to answer questions and field comments. It is the people who hold the power, and we must not lose sight of that. There are laws to follow, Mr. Timpson. Are you proposing the citizen of Cedar Falls should have all the power? No, 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 of course not. See, see my proposal is simple. I mean, uh, the residents of Cedar Falls already do have the power. I'm merely their mouthpiece. I will always put the rights of an individual ahead of any rights of any bureaucratic institution looking for a quick fix. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Oh, uh, no habla español, señor. Uh, pregunta próxima. And our records indicate that you hold no formal means of employment. Where does your money stem from, Mr. Timpson? Well, my income? Well, you see, that's... Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Malcolm Abacus. And as Tim Timpson's campaign manager, I feel like I can most accurately answer any questions concerning the financing of his campaign. Chuck, can he do that? Mr. Abacus, this is highly irregular. So is this entire campaign, Chuck. Mr. Timpson's a pioneer in our town of Cedar Falls. He's hiking through untread territory. And that's right, and, and Mr. Abacus, being a fellow citizen of Cedar Falls, should also be heard. Chuck. Speak on, Mr. Abacus. Chuck. The bylaws of a debate such as this allow any resident to address the issue, although I'm, I'm, I'm not sure this is what the founding fathers had in mind. Well, that's because the writers of such archaic laws, again, wanted to suppress the common vote. Speak on, Mr. Abacus. Thank you, Tim. Now, as far as your question about the financing of the Timpson campaign, once again, Mr. Timpson's chosen a charter in unforeseen territory. He's chosen somebody with no ties to the existing regime. And he's chosen somebody with no agenda as well. But most importantly, he's chosen somebody who's worked in this great town of Cedar Falls for us for quite a long time and knows what it's like to be under the suppression of misused power. That someone is Mr. Xavier Giles. <laughs> to such a publicly scandalously delicious form. That's it. I'm going to double my contribution to the new campaign. Wow, this is quite exciting. I mean, what could happen next? I have a question for Mr. Timpson. <laughs> now that uh, your wife's been cleared, do you have any intention of finding out who really murdered Mel Haynes?
Hey, how you doing? Hey, what are you doing? 